an EV battery until it hits about 70%. It's considered to still be in good shape. Uh, on the one that place that I follow where they published them, the lowest I've ever seen was 91%. You should lose about 10% every 130,000 miles. That gives you almost a 400,000 mile useful life on an EV battery. And used EV rebate creating a price floor at 25,000. And the reason is if you can get one of these used EVs cheap enough as a dealer so that you could sell it for 25,000, the buyer gets that $4,000 tax credit. So what happens is that you see a lot of $25,000 EVs or cases where if it's close, they'll just go ahead and sell it for that because somebody's not going to buy a $26,000 EV and not get the tax credit. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. And in here I am today with our founder and chief editor, Bill Moore. How's it going, Bill? Shalom Aleichem. <laughs> and peace be with you. And peace be with you. All right. Well, the article I want to cover today is the recurrent report for a quarter four. It's on the used electric prices and market report. Recurrent's a, a real interesting company because they, they do stats on the EV space. But the other thing is they have this software that you can run on your EV that tells you how your battery life is. And so they supply all this, a lot of data related to how people's batteries work. And in some cases, some EV only sales companies or car dealerships, as people like to call them, put this on their website with every car they have for sale. And it'll give a battery rating that's a percent of the original battery range. And it kind of gives you an idea because an EV battery, until it hits about 70%, is considered to still be in good shape. Uh, on the one that place that I follow where they publish them, the lowest I've ever seen was 91%. So you've still got a lot of useful life typically. And you're supposed to lose 1% about every 13,000 miles is kind of supposed average magic number for, you know, how an EV battery should decline. So you should lose about 10% every 130,000 miles. That gives you almost a 400, almost a 400,000 mile useful life on an EV battery. Of course, it doesn't always work out that way. And and who owns the same car for four hundred thousand miles? Nobody. Well, I'm not saying nobody. I mean, we've had, we've seen, you know, we've seen cases of that. There, there's exceptions. And, and I've known some people who've had pickup trucks that they're on their third or fourth engine, but they they like the body of their pickup truck and the cab of their pickup truck, so they keep dropping engines into their pickups. But some of that makes sense because a pickup truck body and everything has a certain useful value, you know, regardless, and it's worth keeping, continuing to do that. But anyways, this is talking about popular three-year-old EVs converge around 25 to 30,000 and used EV rebate creating a price floor at 25,000. And the reason is if you can get one of these used EVs cheap enough as a dealer so that you could sell it for 25,000, the buyer gets that $4,000 tax credit. So what happens is that you see a lot of $25,000 EVs or cases where if it's close, they'll just go ahead and sell it for that because somebody's not going to buy a $26,000 EV and not get the tax credit. As we come here, we see that two of the cars, the green and the purple. So the purple is the recurrent price index of all EVs and the green is the Volkswagen ID4. So you've got the Mach-E and the Model Y though, Model Y is in yellow, sits at around 32,000, and the Mach E is around 29,000. So they're a little bit above that magic number. That's why the reasons um, when we've had Alex, Alex um, Lawrence from over in Utah, saying he sells about 100 Tesla Model 3s. Well, this purple recurrent number is a lot of it is because of all of those off lease. Tesla Model 3 is being sold and they're being sold for anywhere from twenty three dollars to $25,000 and they get that $4,000 tax credit. And those things are selling like crazy. And I don't think it's just Alex's company. I'm sure other pl plenty of other places are selling and getting that using that $4,000 tax credit. Used EV prices stable throughout 2024. Market maturity reached after 45% price decreases over the last 18 months. Well, a lot of that was cars really went up in value during the pandemic. 
There was all these supply chain issues, different things. I knew people who had bought used cars in like 2019 and 2021. Two years later, they they were being offered more money to sell their car for cash than what they'd paid for it two years before. And there was lots of cases of people who'd bought Teslas. And a year later, that used Tesla was worth more than what they'd paid for it. But then starting in 2022, 23, the prices have come back down to normal. And so it's happened. And then you take in the rebates and you have massive depreciation on a lot of EVs. Since becoming a real market force in 21, EVs develop a reputation for significant depreciation. While vehicle depreciation is up across most vehicle types and powertrains, EV depreciation thus far has not been reflective of a mature, stable market. In the past four years, EV prices rose quickly with COVID and then fell rapidly with dramatic Tesla price cuts. Well, that that too, and the fact that there's you know more competition out there for them as well. So the twenty five thousand dollar price limit drew a big line in the sand that many bidders wouldn't cross. That accelerated the decline in values to that break even point. But then once the collective EV reseller market understood where that line was, they flocked to purchase vehicles that towed the line. So there's high demand from dealers up to that price point, but almost no demand above it. So that that's quite fascinating. I mean, I just couldn't imagine going and looking for a $29,000 used EV. It it makes sense to buy one in the United States and take advantage of that tax break. Most 2022 EV models converging towards $25,000. So the light blue down here at the very bottom is the Chevy Bolt. Chevy Bolts can be found under $20,000 and you can get the $20,000 or the $4,000 tax credit. I don't see the LEAF on those list, which is kind of sad because um, I'm sure the LEAF would have been good market data. So this number here, the second one, it's even got occasionally got some coming under $20,000 here on the uh, Model 3. I have seen some that have definitely been cheaper, but if you look at a lot of places like car gurus and other places for uh, used car prices, you, there just aren't a lot of used EVs for sale below 25, they get snapped up pretty fast. Now, a lot of places in the ad, it may state, they usually have a picture, it'll say price includes the $4,000 tax credit or, you know, or it'll at least say eligible for the $4,000 tax credit. Some sites like Carvana, they have a separate page just for tax credit cars. So you can hit a link on their site for that and see what all cars they have that are eligible because it's not just EVs. It's also the plug-in hybrids that are eligible as well. They just have to be below $25,000 and you have to be below a certain income limit, which isn't terribly hard to hit. Bottom line then is go take, if you're interested in an EV, go take a look what's uh, available because you could probably pick up something. You know, it may have uh, what, 50 to 70,000 miles or something on it, but you can pick no, under uh, you know under thirty thousand, probably close to twenty five. And if you throw the tax credit in, you're looking at you know nineteen or twenty thousand dollars. You know, one one of the things is, and people are reluctant because they think that you see all these things like oh, you know, um, what is it that uh, EVs are disposable? They only last for fifty thousand miles or some crazy crap like that. And the, they all have a minimum of a hundred eight year, hundred thousand mile powertrain and battery warranty. So, and then when you get into something now, Tesla does the, that minimum on the rear wheel drive, but when you move up to the long range, it goes to one hundred twenty thousand. And if you go to one of their premium vehicles, it goes to one hundred and fifty thousand. Um, and then if you were to buy a used Rivian, which they didn't even have in there as examples. Um, the used Rivians have 175,000. So, I mean, there, there's a lot of, you know, room and a lot of life left on. Now, do they still have other issues? Sure. The most common thing I see people replacing are either things like door handles, trunk releases, uh, windshield wipers, you know, but those aren't something that you wouldn't have issues with on a regular car as well. I mean, yeah, um, you're going to have more frequent tire replacements. Not a lot. It's probably 20% more often that you're replacing tires, but you're not going to be replacing brakes. So, you know, you've got kind of a trade-off there. What you save in brakes, you might make up for 
with spending more on tires. But, uh, you know, there's just a lot of things. You're not doing oil changes, you know, so there's there's a lot of things you're not doing. If you go to buy one, make sure you don't um, buy an extended warranty with free oil changes. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'd be bundling that with every EV if I was a dealer. Free oil changes with your EV. Exactly. You know. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.